The next station on the Midland Main Line was Barnt Green, a junction for the cross-country branch line that served the important Worcestershire town of Redditch and bypassed the Licky Incline to give a through route to Cheltenham and Gloucester via Evesham and Ashchurch. Coming off the main line at Barnt Green is a train from Birmingham New Street, headed by one of the famous Fowler compounds. This engine had been especially rostered for the cameras in order to make this film for Railway Roundabout. This shows how the railways cooperated with Pat Whitehouse and John Adams. By this time, Railway Roundabout had established itself on television and British Railways management was realising the publicity value of a TV programme, aimed as it was at both boys and adults. The live commentary given by Pat and John was tailored to have an educational benefit and scenes were shot to illustrate various points, such as these of watering and handing over the token at Redditch. The railway was single line beyond the town and only the driver in possession of the token was allowed to run his train over the stretch to which the token referred. This was and remains the standard practice for working single line railways. Although today the tokens are electronic signals rather than physical pieces of metal. The tokens were exchanged manually, either when the train was stopped in a station or, if not travelling too quickly, on the move. The token was put in a pouch attached to a large hoop which then could be slipped over the engineman's arm. Each section of the railway between signal boxes would have a token or staff inscribed with the names of the section to which it applied. Various methods were adopted to synchronise the tokens with signalling and point work, but the most common took the form of a key, which could be inserted in a mechanical apparatus to unlock the appropriate levers to enable the train to proceed. The system in use here was known as token full block. The locomotive, number 41157, built in 1925 by the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow, was cleaned up for its television stardom and worked the train for two days for the cameras. As mentioned earlier, it was built to the design of Sir Henry Fowler, the second LMS chief mechanical engineer, and the design was a development of Johnson & Dealey's Midland compound, first produced in the early 1900s. The onboard camera was in use on one run and captured the arrival at Broome Junction, a small country junction station where the former Stratford-upon-Avon and Midland Junction Railway came in from the east. This line had a colourful history, but the section from Stratford to Broome Junction was to close in 1960. It had lost its passenger services in 1947. The SMJ is seen disappearing behind the compound. Salford Priors was the next station after Broome Junction. Here Pat saw some road rollers rusting quietly away. Today they would attract as much attention as a locomotive. These engines were the first LMS Express passenger engines and were soon hopelessly underpowered for the increasingly heavy mainline trains. They did much good work in Scotland and on former Midland lines but were soon relegated to secondary work as the LMS caught up with modern Pacific and 460 designs for the principal duties. This cross-country line was usually worked by Fowler's large 264 tank engines, which had the same boiler as the compounds. At Evesham, the Great Western's Cotswold line to Worcester, known as the Old Worse and Worse, had its own station to the right of our train. The line had been transferred to the Western region upon nationalisation and beyond Evesham was double track. A junction had been put in at Evesham to allow the route to be used as a diversionary line for Cheltenham to Honeybourne trains. The line was known as the Loop and rejoined the Midland Main Line at Ashchurch. It was used as an alternative route for freight trains avoiding the Licky Incline, but was never engineered to express standards, becoming redundant in the 1960s as it duplicated both the Midland Main Line and the Great Western one via Honeybourne the latter also being axed by Dr. Beechy. It closed to passengers in 1963, with freight finishing in the following year. <laughs>